Hey guys, what's going on? Cyber Fury here. It's been a minute, hasn't it? My apologies for not being able to keep up with my self-imposed video uploading schedule. I just got super busy with life and had not a chance to actually sit down and record this commentary. However, just for you guys, we got GT7 online here at Red Bull Ring from a little while ago. And when life gives you lemons, be sure to take them and squeeze them into your eyes because that is much more comfortable than trying to take T1 here at Red Bull Ring in this race for us. Get completely spun out to start not only the start of this race, but the start of the races in this series here. I wasn't able to get my force field up in time to push him away until after he made contact. So we will damn the engineer on the bridge for that mistake there. However, if there's a couple things you should know about this channel, it's one, I am normally susceptible to very stupid mistakes that we try and learn from. But two, the more motivational side of it is never give up on a race despite how it starts. In this one, we get booted to the side, go from fourth to last, and not able to take turn three as a result of our ever so weakening composure. However, jumping forward a lap, all of that kind of changes here. With a half second penalty for an off track earlier in the lap, I come around turn four, or as I call it, the death corner, and we see two cars that got tied up here, which means that we have an open window to take the outside here, and we go from last to not last. So not the best showing so far, but hey, at least our name is no longer on the bottom of the leaderboard, and we will take that. It's all about taking the small victories as you get them, building confidence, and then snowballing that into the rest of this race. Speaking of snowballing confidence here, coming up to the penalty line, we serve our half-second penalty. However, the two guys in front of us had much longer penalties, which means two more free positions for us in this race, so not last and making up some ground here as this race goes on. However, unfortunately, come around to the last lap, that's about as good as things would improve. We ended that race in P7. So wiping that from our minds, we went back and did some more qualifying, ended up putting up a qualifying time that puts us in P1 here, which also boosts the confidence and the optimism that we will not be booted on T1. However, optimism and confidence be damned because we did get booted on T1 here by the racer in P2. Coming around the first turn here, you can argue maybe I was going a bit slow there and kind of deserved it. He tried to take up the inside and we just kind of got glued together, so... I want to say no harm, no foul, but you guys let me know in the comments who's at fault there. Is it me for going too slow or for him trying to take too aggressive a T1? You know what they say, a race is never won on T1, but a race can definitely be lost on T1 as we saw in the last race and most likely in this one here. Putting the good into the front of our minds, we do take a much cleaner T3, even though it wasn't the best. For some reason, this car was super, super sensitive on that corner, though I didn't really want to push it half the time and actually kind of scared me every time I approached it. However, as I said before, susceptible to very stupid mistakes, and here's one of them right here. This is what I'm calling the death corner because I have probably the highest chance of spinning out on that corner than probably any other corner in all of this game. I don't know what it is about that corner. I don't know if it's the high speed going into it or what, but it just catches me out so many times. As we cap off the second lap here, we see a big mistake from the Ferrari in front as he went super wide on the final corner, which allows us to make up some significant ground on him. And even trying to poke ourselves up the inside, which we do, he takes the bait, goes around the outside. We're able to sneak up the inside on a clean pass and make it stick. Taking another look at this from a different angle, as you can see here, just whoop, right up the inside without a second thought as we're able to get on the gas before he can onto the straight, which is massive for us because, again, we are no longer in last place, which we know is a small victory that leads to potentially larger ones. Coming up to T3 here, though, I was a little bit scared for my life. He was right on my rear bumper, so I was hoping that he didn't make any contact with me coming through here. The little swerve you see was me taking the curb a little bit too hard and losing friction. So is what it is, but we were able to keep P11 so far on our climb back up the leaderboard. Probably not to P1 with how this race has gone, but at least a little bit higher until we make the same stupid mistake on the death corner. I don't know what it is. It's just him being on my bumper and a combination of me obviously not knowing what the hell I'm doing there pushes me into that right there. 
Jumping forward in the race here to lap five, we are again in a very similar situation coming into T1, trying to get him on the straight as we're using all of our power in the draft, as we actually are do end up catching and passing him on the straight here. And again, going into T3, again, I'm more fearing for my life. As prayers were said that nobody was going to make contact or it'd be spun or anything like that. And we both managed to take the exact same corner, slipping at pretty much the exact same place on that corner. So again, we are basically in the same spot. Jumping forward even further into the race now on the back half of this, not only this race, but on this lap, we see the two guys battling in front. So we're going to try and sneak up close to them. One is going off to the side. That is Crispy Chrome from earlier as we are now chasing down the Lamborghini to see what position we can get in. They don't serve a penalty, so it's going to be all on us to try and use the last two corners to get to him. A little bit of contact made there as he hits the brakes a little hard and then comes across and gets bumped again. So it's not really malicious on my part. There wasn't any intention on hitting him there. It was more like it seemed like a network problem, and I don't think I hit him really that hard on the back rear side of this. So again, let me know in the comments what you think. I think it was morally just bad connection and hit detection on that part that kind of screwed him out of a position probably more so than he normally would have had jumping into race three here this one is named death and you probably already know why but it's not t1 if that's what you were thinking that is the incorrect answer that is not why i called this one death however if you've been listening to the commentary so far throughout this race you'll probably know what's eventually coming up here as you can see, me and P2 are basically the same car. He was stuck to my bumper this entire race. You can see he is right up on my bumper and there's not really a whole lot I could have done to shake him there. He basically cemented himself there and just wouldn't leave. So every corner that I eventually had to take had to come with a little bit more of a defensive tactic to it and make sure that my spacing was appropriate. My goal was to keep him behind me as close as I could, but keep him behind me. The minute he was able to sneak up the side of me, I knew that I was probably going to lose that drag race. So I needed to take every corner and park myself on every apex to give him the least amount of chance to try and pass me, but also do it in a way to where we're not both being constantly slowed down and then sucked up by the rest of the pack behind. If you haven't noticed already, I am in the Genesis for these series of races. That's not going to change over all the races on Showcase here today. I decided to use a Genesis because it was a little bit outside of the cars that I normally use and decided that I really like the look of this car. I really hope that this concept Genesis eventually kind of does become an actual car in some capacity because it just looks really cool. On lap two here, coming into the death corner, I take that really, really aggressive defensive position coming into here. And it ends up working out quite splendidly for me. I end up keeping him behind me as we kind of take another look at this from the angle. You can see just how much on the inside I was trying to take this corner, forcing him way out. He was doing the smart thing, trying to go for the switcheroo or the old switchback. But again, parking myself on the apex, making it damn near impossible for him to actually get past me there. The tactic so far is working and it was working pretty good. I have to say that despite me trying to park myself on every apex and make it just impossible for him to pass me i was doing it in a way that actually made sense and we weren't actually being scooped up by the pack behind us we were actually making some ground there so surprise surprise cyber fury was actually doing something that makes sense for once in a race instead of all this nonsense that we've had on showcase so far rounding out lap two again just taking every corner as best i can trying to carry as much speed as possible just trying to shake him, if anything, as you can see, I for like the splittest of seconds, I had the fastest lap before he took it. And on the next lap, wipe everything I just mentioned, take all the pat on the backs back as we make a stupid mistake. I did not gear down into first going around that corner as I had intended to do, as I had done for this entire race so far, keeping it in second gear and proving why that's a bad idea. Ending up off track, allowing not just JB in P2, but also McLovin in P3 to come up in front and take those two positions away. So not as bad as being spun on T1, not as bad as spinning myself out and losing a bunch of positions. 
but nevertheless not optimal either on lap four trying to get myself in a little bit of a groove i end up pulling a fastest sector there in sector one so i'm hoping to keep the momentum up as we go for the pass on mclovin here into the death corner can we actually make the pass stick no we can't we're simply just going a little bit too slow around here and there it is once again hitting the curb and spinning out it's like peanut butter and jam on this channel it is the bread and butter <laughs> of this content apparently and we lose what is that three four more spots there so again an unfortunate death corner experience for us and we have to figure out how the hell we're getting back in this one we were supposed to be getting back into it from p3 now let's see what we can do from p7 as i just constantly seem to be putting myself at a bigger and bigger disadvantage and nobody knows why i'd like to think this is some galaxy brain play that i'm doing here instilling false confidence in people but the fact of the matter is these races are simply just not long enough for that kind of a strategy to work out nor do i think that will ever work out in motorsport at all jumping forward here to the beginning of lap five we end up pulling some ground here on the corvette sneaking up the inside as he pulls out going into t1 which is a very smart play and a very defensive play on his end allowing me to take the position before we both risk being spun on t1 here which at this point would have just added to the montage so not really anything out of the ordinary but thank you to banjos and mowers in the corvette behind for that play coming around t3 i wish i could say the same about the clean driving here on display absolute chaos unfolding on that corner as the porsche goes a little bit slower than i anticipate i end up bumping into his corner panel that spins him out the car in front i guess hit the curb in the wrong way which spun him out and now i'm in a drag race with the corvette that i just passed going into the death corner luckily i'm able to pull the old switcheroo on him taking up the inside and getting back in front that puts me up into p4 and as always my apologies to the pink porsche that I ended up spinning out there that again was a non-malicious thing I think again that was kind of a potentially network thing coming out there but nevertheless let me know down in the comments what your verdict would be if you were the race marshal in this situation would you make me give back the position give me a massive penalty or what would you choose there coming around the final corner we were able to build a bit of a gap to ourselves after that switcheroo pass and we end up cleaning that race up in p4 so now so far just to highlight a little bit we've had a fourth to ninth i believe it was we've had a first to seventh we've had now a first to fourth so now race number four it's called bumper to bumper because the guy behind me was bumper to bumper again racing with another very fast individual who stuck to me like glue the minute he got his chance to but I was able to sneak away with P1, with T not only P1, but T1 as well. Creating a bit of a gap here to the pack behind. I'm trying to just explode off the starting line to try and get as far away as possible to try to minimize the potential for anybody ruining the race here, myself included. So my game plan was to try and focus on the racing as we almost spin out on death corner yet again but focus on the racing focus on racing clean and focus on trying to generate as large of a gap as possible we don't want anybody touching us for this race as we've had enough of dropping p1 and i want to just finish where i started for once especially after getting the qualifying time to put us in p1 pretty consistently for all of these split races Rounding out the first lap here, I'm feeling pretty good, feeling pretty confident, looking pretty smooth. It's just whether or not we can keep that momentum up for the rest of the race, or if we're going to falter at any point. Coming here, we ended up having a clean first lap, getting ourselves a little bit of a gap to the person behind. However, on the very next lap, they were able to close that gap and take up the inside, giving us a tiny bit of a nudge there, which I think is a little bit over exaggerated these days this is after the big physics update that happened to gt7 and made cars you know the one that made cars kind of understeer more and react a bit more on track i feel like it might have been a little bit of an overreaction on the game's part but 
who knows? I mean, realistically, at the end of the day, we're racing pixels across a wire around the world. Who's to say what would actually happen on a real track with real cars? It's kind of up for interpretation for whatever the developers want to do here. Rounding out the second lap, though, we are able to close the gap. So kind of coming off the nudge in a little bit of a more positive way, we are actually in contention to try and sneak up the inside here. Now, he makes an absolute brilliant play by pinning me so far inside that the line that I have going through T1 is basically non-existent. So I have to break super hard, which allows him to take T1 at a much higher speed and pull away a little bit. However, T3 would be his undoing eventually here, taking the curb a little bit hard and a little bit too fast, which makes him spin out. And now we are in a very, a little bit of a predicament here as to figure out, should we try and take up the inside? I decide it's probably safer not to and just stick as close as possible to try and catch him on this little bit of stretch here. But I was a little bit too enthusiastic with my accelerator, which caused me to have a little bit of a minus moment, but luckily didn't spin out for once and we were able to continue on. Coming into lap five here, have ourselves a half second penalty from off track, which I don't really think I would really agree with potentially, but we know that he has a little bit of problem with this corner and we just pin it on the inside, making the pass and hopefully making this stick. Right after here, we continue on into the death corner. So now all eyes are trying on to not screw up this corner and see what he would do. I opt not for the super defensive line as I pull a little bit of a gap between us. It ends up panning out. We were able to make that turn stick and not spin. So points for us all around as we continue on this lap. However, the problem I'm facing right now is I'm trying to give myself a greater than half second penalty. Despite only having to serve a half second penalty, it ends up being a lot more time than that, just due to the fact that you are decelerated and you have to re-accelerate up to the speed you were going. So that is going to be big problems for us as in comes Scanny right behind. I opt to take the defensive line into this corner. He gives us a bit of a bump. We end up not being able to take that corner. However, I am able to save it and rejoin fairly quickly right after ending up right beside him as he's able to squeeze the inside corner onto the straight before the finish line here. So now we are on the last lap. So being a little bit peeved on what just happened, I try to take a very aggressive T1. He ends up hitting the brakes a lot harder than I anticipated and I couldn't stop in time. I send him completely off the track and I get a three second penalty. That one, I will completely agree with. That one was my fault. I tried to be super aggressive there and it did not pan out. However, the grouping in front of us is super tight and cluster going into T3. And that goes about as well as you'd expect it to with not one, but two spin outs here as Scanny continues on his merry way, getting himself a bit of a penalty for the off track that he caused. Coming up to the deceleration slash penalty line, I just wasn't able to get close enough to him, so I wasn't going to be able to take the spot over him. We both accelerate up. He ends up going a little slow around this corner. I give him another nudge, kind of just hurry up. Let's get this race over with. We drop to the two guys that were behind, and I end up in P4. So again, another first to fourth, this time with a little bit of overly aggressive driving, frustrations mounting as we keep making these stupid mistakes and costing us the race. However, going into the final race, I want you to take a look at how close that spread is for the top four. We are all within a half second of each other. The difference between myself and the guy in B2, around four one hundredths of a second. So a very, very close race. And so with all that's been going on, all the mounting frustration, all of the dropped P1s and all of the times we have screwed up around Red Bull Ring, we have driven it enough times. We have done enough laps on this. The entire purpose of this final race is composure. Keep your composure. Don't let anybody influence the race you have. We've proven that we can defend against a guy who's on our bumper multiple times so far. We've proven that we can do this track in a clean fashion with the fastest qualifying time. We know that we are supposed to be the faster car of this grouping. So now it's just time to put it all together, keep it all together, and try to squeeze out the best race possible that we can give. 
for this race, I decided to switch to the PlayStation recording of this race instead of the Gran Turismo replay system, just so we have the leaderboards and the kind of time differences between everything showing here in the proper manner. Let me know down below which one you prefer, if you prefer the Gran Turismo pretty replays with all the ray tracing and stuff in it, or if you prefer the live quote unquote or flashback recording gameplay provided by the PlayStation itself, because I'm kind of torn on either one. I think they both look good. I think this one gives a little bit of a closer connection to the actual way that the game looks while we're racing. So as you can see, kind of the boards there are a little bit hard to read. But again, you know, you kind of count the boards and you kind of have an understanding of where your breaking point is anyway, once you go around the track for quite a while. So let me know as we pick up the race here on lap two. Just trying again to keep ourselves with as much gap as possible. I've managed to squeeze out about a second gap and just trying to build on that as the race goes. You can see, you know, 1.25 about therein, kind of raising and falling the more curves you go around, the kind of the more straights you hit. But the name of the game is to be just consistent. That's what's going to win the race. We already know that we are on pace for P1. It's just make sure not to hit or not to miss rather corner or any sort of braking zone. And as you can see here, lap three, then shortly, very shortly turns into lap four, which in itself very shortly turns into lap five, which finally turns into lap six, which is our final lap here. So the beauty of this is that we are racing cleanly. We are building ourselves or we're maintaining rather a bit of a gap and we aren't letting other racers really influence our race to begin with. The big problem we have, though, is can we actually go around the death corner and turn three, I guess, one final time without screwing this up. The guy behind, again, still within that one second, 1.2 second window. It's all about keeping it clean and keeping it consistent here. The beauty of racing clean and consistent is that you get into kind of a groove and as long as nobody is close enough to be on your radar, it's really easy to settle into a groove and just keep it going. However, I will say it makes for somewhat boring content as you know, you're just going around the track. There's nobody really near you. You're not side by side. You're not bumper to bumper. It's kind of a on one hand, it's cathartic and on the other hand, it could be considered pretty boring. Let me know your thoughts on it down below. Would you rather be out in front and kind of way ahead for the entirety of a race and practice consistency? Or would you rather be fighting somebody the whole time and having to fight tooth and nail to get the victory that you're looking for? Coming around the final corner, we can finally stick it to the man as we finally not only finish in a podium position, but finish P1 overall so we do end up finishing where we started finally taking our podium and going home with that as you can see finally pole position fastest lap that one felt good to finally close out the red bull ring saga if you enjoyed this video and you made it this far thank you so so very much it means the world to me to have you here on my little slice of the internet when you could be literally anywhere else and spending your time out there. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't enjoy the video, feel free to hit the thumbs down button. Let me know in the comments why you liked or disliked the video. If you feel compelled to, the subscribe button's always down there, as well as links to my other channels and other social media that you can find me at. I'm gonna try and get better at being on that social media, as well as getting better at putting out more content for you. I should be back pretty soon here. Love you long time. See you in the next one. Peace.